damn you, was wrong. Filthy old ogre. Why did you have to come back and haunt me like that? I don't need a bloody reminder of my past. I know full well what we did back then. How much suffering we caused. And I tried not to care. Some have to die so that others can live. Eat or be eaten. It's the way of this world. Of all worlds. So why do I feel so tormented? Cursed to follow the right path. And there I am now. Like a moth. Fumbling about in a dark world. About to stumble straight into the spider's web. It's pitiful really. But what else could I do? Burying Barzrog. Killing that Rastani woman, being cursed, and leaving my band of brothers. It's all led me here, to a place where strange voices are trying to push me towards unobtainable goals. And all I can do now is to be led along. This is Red Moon Role Playing. The morning is especially bleak today, as you awaken in your rooms after an average night's sleep. The sky seems even greyer than usual. Still, you collect your things, exit the room and make your way downstairs to the bottom of the Blue Water Inn. There, you see Van Richten and Esmeralda have already risen and have collected their things to get ready to leave. You also notice Erwin talking with Muriel, who seems to have just arrived. I uh, come walking down the stairs and see quite the gathering going on. And I look around and I try to catch in on their conversation. Erwin is asking Muriel very insistently about the welfare of his children. He is saying, they have arrived safely, yes, uh, nothing has gone wrong there. And she gives him a reassuring nod, and as she turns to you, and says, Do not worry, they are safe for now. We are holding up okay at the vineyard. I uh, smile when I see her and when she turns to me. It's uh, funny that she used to go under another name for me for a while until I saw her human form and uh, I nod to her and I say so you're taking everyone to the vineyard are you? That is where most of our number are trying to dwell now while we keep a firm eye on Yester Hill. However I came to inform you of the things that have been following you. I after all with a selection of our kin and have been following you the last day. I don't think you noticed though. She smiles at that. <laughs> I, uh, I don't say anything, but yeah, I did notice there have been a couple of times when we've met, seen crows or ravens. What I say to her is, I wasn't sure that that was actually yours or your people. It is understandable. After all, not every raven you see is a were-raven. Most are ravens. Still, I came to find out how you were doing, and more importantly, let you know, I've already told Van Richten, but you have been being followed by at least two packs of werewolves, and last night there was a lot of stirring at the Fastani camp nearby, although they didn't seem to have left yet. They were getting ready a lot of horses, though. Hmm. 
What do you think about that camp? Are they, uh, would you say, on our side? Because, uh, as I understand now, uh, a lot of the Vistani are actually on, well, on the Count, under the Count's fist. This would be correct. I do not think those men at that camp are on our side. But for now, they haven't made a move. But I've been told that you're actually going to the castle itself. A crazy idea, but I suppose if you have a plan, you have a plan. But just in case you weren't going there, I think you would have encountered the wolves and maybe the Evervistani who seem to be getting ready to find you. That is worrying, I say. It is worrying that they are searching for us so openly then that they seem to have really targeted us. We must make haste to the castle and achieve our objective sooner rather than later because we could take care of the ones that we met previously with some help from Esmeralda, but should they come and we, we don't have the wagon that we had then, I, I wonder if we will be so lucky. Esmeralda comes forward and nods. Yes, I admit it seems fortunate that we actually were so quick. Uh, you feel they are harrying us. Maybe they know where we're going and want to make sure we go there. That's what Van Richten feels. Indeed, that is what I feel. If anything, this just gives our mission renewed purpose. We need to go now. Indeed. I agree. I agree. Let us get ready. I look around to see if they've put out anything to eat for us. Yes, there is some food. It's very basic, but something has been laid out. Muriel starts to leave at this point, remarking, I'm going to head back out, and me and my brethren will try and make sure we watch the roads for you. And if you need our help, we'll be close, but... Yes, maybe best not to confront them, at least not now. As she is about to leave, I I ask, is there a signal or a call that we should listen for? She has a moment to think about this and just remarks, You'll see a large flock of ravens coming towards you. We'll fly in formation. <laughs> not something ravens normally do, so hopefully that will signal to you that it's us. Right. Alright. And that means something's coming. Good to know. Yes. And she leaves. And you make your food preparations. And Van Richten sort of gestures for you all to start heading to the wagon. Remarking, once again, perhaps it is wise that you hide in the back for now. We can't really believe that the people of this town are on our side anymore either. What with this news of the new rulership and all that. Yes, they do seem to be aligned with the Count. We we can definitely not trust them. Um, we must... Yes, let us use the wagon. I agree. Detecting uh, Roman's eagerness to uh, share the space with uh, little dear Mishka again, I, I remark, yes, maybe you can contribute towards a breakfast, <laughs> Roman. Ah... <laughs> uh, Yes, yes, that. Um, well, I'm I'm sure that that it will be fine. Uh, it, it was fine before, and yes, um, um, it will be fine now as well. Owen takes a moment to speak to both of you before you go, scratching at his beard and sighing a little. My friends, I wish there was more I could do to help you, but I'm afraid when you next come here. It might not be wise to rely on my tavern as safe haven. I am going to try and be gone myself in a few more days. Just a note, if you ever come back this way. Alright, that's good to know. We might not come back this way at all, but this is one of the few roads that leads from the castle to, well, the other parts of the land. Was any? Do you have any other advice for us where we could take shelter? I am afraid, my friend, if the devil is truly looking for you now, there is no way you can hide, not really. You can run, I suppose, <laughs> who knows how long you can do that for, but maybe your plan that you are actually going towards him will work in your favour. Well, maybe one of those portals will allow us to take us to a place that's actually close to... And then I stop for a minute. 
Wait. If we go into the castle, ha who will who will bring back our horses? Erwin oh, frowns a little and shrugs. I do not know. I assumed you had some sort of plan in regard to that. Uh, I uh, I uh, grow silent and I I shrug and then I just look at the exit and I uh, I sigh and say, just let's let's get moving. Yes, let's. And you find yourselves once again being packed into the back of the wagon as Van Richten and Esmeralda get ready to leave. Just before I get into the wagon, I go over to my horse and I pat him and uh, I uh, pause for a second and I say, do you think we could perhaps just leave him here in the stables? Or we, I suppose we're going to ride for a bit afterwards, are we? When we get out of the town. Van Richten nods and remarks, Do not worry. I have a plan in regard to the horses. Alright. That's reassuring. <laughs> and I snort and get back to the, get into the wagon. Before I enter the wagon, I'm, I'm touching the, the holy symbol. Um, whispering a prayer to Lathander for, for things to be to go well during this journey. I'm worried. I'm very, very worried. I think we're making a horrible mistake, but I see no other way. And I must get out of here. I cannot cannot remain here. I cannot remain so far away from the thunder. This must work. I will make it work. Yes, I will make it work. And so you begin your journey again. Wagon rattles around. Mishka seems quite sluggish this morning. Obviously, you've been sleeping a lot. And perhaps is more used to your company now. Peering out the window again, you see the familiar sights of the town square. And the people making their daily rounds. So many of these cloaked individuals seem to walk around now. People just wearing these black hoods and walking in groups. The wagon continues down the road, slowly approaching the eastern gate, which is where you entered the first time. There's a bit of a mild commotion again as you hear a stoppage and some talk between guards at the gates, but it seems a good conversation. The guard being happy that you are leaving, quite frankly. That's absolutely fine, he says. And the gates open and you begin leaving the town behind. I look back towards Valakai and I think about the church and I think about what must have happened to the priest there, what we caused in the city, how our actions have affected the lives of so many. Even though all we wanted was, was just to protect ourselves, actions truly have consequences. I hope what we will do next won't end in similar fashion. After an hour on the road, you finally feel the wagon stop as Van Richten comes round the back to open the wagon and allow you once again to be outside. He feels now it should be safe for you to ride openly again. I uh, look him over. Is he still in the shape of uh, the elf? Indeed he is. Or the half elf. Hmm. I nod and I get out quite eagerly and stretch out my full length, having been somewhat cramped in there. Getting outside of the wagon, I look to the sky, I look towards the faint light. How, how is it? Is it? Is there still some light left? Hardly. If anything, you feel a storm will be coming soon. I have a bad feeling about this, I say. The light, it should be with us. Truly, Lathander should be blessing us here as we are about to embark upon this journey, and yet he is nowhere to be seen. I I touch the, the holy symbol, and I, I, I fall into prayer. Uh, and I uh, cross my arms, and I say, lean against the wagon, and I say, well... The light, isn't that what we're about to go fetch? 
the light in a little gem that will shine out over the landscape of this place. I open my eyes as I hear that and I say, Yes, of course, Roshek, you're, you're correct. It is up to us to bring back the light. And I will act as a servant of Lathander and I will, I will bring him back, if such a thing is even possible. We will do this and we will be successful and there is no room for doubt. Yet I am filled with doubt. Nothing but doubt. And uh, I don't really pay attention to those last sentences, but I just nod. And that's what we'll do. We'll get the lights, and then we'll get the blades, and then we will kill the devil. And I stop making my way towards my horse again. Van Richten listens to your conversation, and merely frowns. Although, that does seem to be his primary expression anyway, so who knows what he's thinking. He goes to get ready on his horse as you ride off. You ride now ascending up into the hills and mountains, much as before when you came this way and you were descending. It only takes another hour or two before you can start seeing again that great view now of the town of Alakai, of the lake, of all the forest land that surrounds that area. Esmeralda comes up to you after a while. So, the Roshek, are you prepared for what may be about to occur? I uh, was in my own thoughts, so I didn't really hear her coming up beside me, so I flinched a little as I, she's suddenly there. <clears throat> and uh, admittedly, I haven't been in my own thoughts. I. No, I. Uh, no. I'm I'm not quite sure. I don't know the way in. We've been studying the maps and we have an idea of where we could go first. But we don't know for sure where we'll actually need to be. She brushes her hair back for a moment and takes a moment to adjust her, her weapon belt. She runs a hand down her left leg and sort of fiddles with something. It's a bit of a strange action, actually. Before looking back at you, I've been talking with Van Richten a lot. He has informed me of many things I did not know. I admit I'm not very happy with this plan of splitting up, to be honest with you, but I can see merit. I can see merit. I just feel, personally, all four of us together, perhaps, we could have just finished this now, but he seems adamant that perhaps the sword is vital, and I will not question him on that. Still... You will need to keep your guard about you. Not only could be encountering minions and beasts, but he is not going to simply be an opponent who will fight in a straight fight. He apparently has great powers, more so than even a vampire would normally have. Well, what are you suggesting, aside from sudden fireballs coming flinging at us? You'll have to be aware that he's probably going to try and play games with you. The castle itself will probably have traps, or things that look safe but are not safe. It's just things to be aware of, although I have been informed that he does have at least some weaknesses. After all, he, I believe, tries to make it seem that he is completely omnipotent in every way. That is not true. Uh, nod towards Roman, and I say... Roman seems to have a way of at least detecting bits and traps and illusions. Though, uh, well, I suppose it would have been good to have someone there who could actually disarm them. Barrington speaks up at this point. Another important thing to remember is that, unfortunately, we have no idea what role the Dark Powers will play. They may find our actions today amusing and not hinder us, or they may hinder us greatly. There's not much we can do about that, I'm afraid. That's right. They did bring us as playthings, after all. No child wants to break its toy. <laughs> I start laughing. Exactly. But the most important thing to remember, even though it might not seem it, is that even Strad himself is one of their toys. Which is how he has so much power. Because they allow him to. 
Well, what do you mean? They? Is he not his own? Of course not. <laughs> he almost laughs a little. As I said to Esmeralda, these powers, they are beyond a vampire, even an old and clever vampire with magical abilities such as himself. You would not think vampires can control mist walls that surround whole dimensions, did you? Oh no, it did sound quite powerful, yeah. I have to admit that, that I believed him to have ascended to some kind of godlike status, and that that is how he is so powerful. But hearing that he is just a vampire, albeit an incredibly powerful one, that is something that gives some hope, at least. I do not think myself able to slay a god, but, well, a vampire, perhaps. Is there a way to sever this connection, do you think? Or perhaps to make these overlords lose interest in him and abandon him? He frowns a little and simply remarks, Perhaps. Normally the way it's done, and he frowns, would be proving that you are a better toy than him. Ugh. Whether that's something you want, on the other hand, is entirely debatable, I'm sure you'd agree. I, uh, first find the thought a bit appalling, and uh, then I fall into thoughts. Hmm. Thinking to myself... All I can think uh, when it comes to this account is that in order to be so cruel to others, in order to put so many people through so much suffering, perhaps perhaps he himself carries a, a vast and deep sorrow himself. And perhaps that is how he is able to carry out these horrible acts. I would not want to trade places with him that much I know and uh I say nothing to this and with that you'll all fall into silence again as the ride continues for a good more few hours you remember it was a long road the sky gets darker as time goes on must be now maybe three or four o'clock but again here the evening seems to be drawing even closer than usual and you hear distinct rumblings in the clouds. Rain will be coming soon. Finally, you return to those gates, the ones that stood before you, and again, they are open. You pass through them with no incident. In fact, this whole journey has been without incident, you suddenly realize. Even the woods have sounded quiet. That's interesting, I just say. Out of context. It's as if there's a great anticipation. Yes, something big was about to happen, I think. Hmm. And a few minutes more later, you start to see that crossroads. The one which led to the castle, and the other one would now lead back to Barovia, and the way you've come, Valakai. And you notice there's something there. Yes, there's a horse and carriage standing by the crossroads. There are two horses, black, blowing out steam in the slowly incoming misty fog that now surrounds you. What do you do? I, uh, keep my sword at the ready and I... Uh... I look towards uh, Van Richten. I as well. He frowns a little as he continues to approach. As you get very close to this horse and carriage, he motions for everyone to stop. Hmm. What's this? The horse and carriage stands completely still. You notice there is no rider. The windows are blacked up so you cannot see what's inside. But you do notice a door leading in, which seems to be slightly ajar. What do you do? I get off my horse, I I draw my sword and my shield, 
and I move up to the carriage to open it with a sword. I follow behind with my mace and I put my, my shield on as well, getting ready. You move to the carriage, noticing the horses give you some recognition as you approach, but otherwise they do not seem bothered as you go towards the door. And weapons at the ready, you fling open the door to be greeted by an empty carriage with some very nice seats. It's a very big carriage. It could, you imagine, comfortably seat at least eight people. And on one of the seats is a letter. I, uh, I lower my sword at this and uh, I look uh, over at the company and I say, play things indeed. Yes, clearly he's toying with us. I wonder what this will lead to. If it was an ambush, it would surely have been sprung already. Let us see what is written in this letter. I uh, sheathe my sword to be able to get an, uh, up and reach in and grab it. You move towards the letter and take it in your hand. It is sealed with a red waxy seal depicting a coat of arms. Do you open the letter? I uh, step down onto the ground and uh, yeah, I crack open the seal to take out the letter. The letter reads as such. My dearest companions, I bid you invitation to come to my home and be guests at the great wedding that will soon be taking place. I bid you come and dine, and we can talk about many things in a civilized manner. Your passage will be safe, and the carriage will take you peacefully to my domain. I look forward to your arrival. Your host, Strad von Azurovich. And uh, I uh, fold it again after having read this aloud to everyone. And I say, well, he's planning to go on with his little ceremony, isn't he? It does sound like that. There is really no surprise here. We do not have the element of surprise. He knows that we are coming. And... I cannot see how we would be able to approach the castle mm, undetected, especially not now. Although, I don't know. We have a choice. Either we simply go now and follow his invitation. It may, in a way, put us in a position where we would be able to speak to him. Perhaps reason with him. Or perhaps, well, be able to get at him in a way where he would be somehow less prepared. We wouldn't be immediately hostile. There might be a point in, in following this invitation. What What do you say, Roshik? What do you think? Well, there is uh, a few ways to do this. Either what, I mean, either we just ignore it, we go through with what we said, that we split into two groups, yes, and just ignore this carriage, or... Two of us gets into the carriage, the last two are still falls behind as planned, which I would still think would be better than all of us four getting into the same sort of trap. Van Richten nods very in agreement on this. Yes, this is clearly a trap, but he would be expecting us all to arrive together. If you perhaps fall into such an obvious trap, he might not be expecting that then some of us would not have fallen into the trap, so to speak. Hmm. I'm just thinking that if we're actually pursued by two groups of werewolves, will you be uh, all right traveling just the two of you? I mean three, and I nod towards the wagon. He nods. We certainly will be. We would not be encountering them directly. If anything, if there's less of us, we can get round them perhaps through the woods. Not safe, but doable. The final decision, though, lies with you, um, Esmeralda at this point goes. Yes, although to be honest with you, I 
Like I said, I'm not sure about this splitting up. I think it would be better if we all stuck together and took this as one, but uh, the final decision will be yours. I uh, think for a bit, then I... Uh, I pull Roman to the side, and I uh, say in a low tone, this... this Rudolph is clearly out to... to just do his job. He, d he doesn't mind sending us, the two of us, you know, as bait, or as a sort of, you know, trap, sacrifices, or what have you, so he can go in and sort of finish what he's set out to start. Yes, we are simply tools. We are expendable. That much is clear. He... I don't think that he cares much whether we live or die as long as we serve our purpose. Going into this with open eyes is certainly a good thing. I do like the idea of yes, splitting up. Going all together is not a good idea. You and me getting into the carriage and meeting with the Count, that should offer the others a chance to, yes, perhaps bring some surprise into this wedding that we will be attending. Perhaps, perhaps there will be a chance for us to, to find what we're looking for. Yeah, we should uh, keep our eyes open for any sort of way that would lead to such a chamber that would hold the gem. If they suddenly come in as a distraction, I say we just, you know, bolt for whatever way we have decided on and try and get the gem and get out. Indeed. Indeed. I think this is how things must be. I will be able to communicate with uh, our friends from a distance, so we shall be able to send them the signal when when we need the, the distraction. So what do you think about this whole carriage thing? Is it a, a point of actually going in this carriage? I mean, we could as well just go on our own horses. Yes, it would diffuse the situation a little bit, make it more into us being guests. Obviously he has some plans for us, none good, I'm sure, but yes, going into this in a somewhat friendly manner uh, might offer better opportunities to surprise him later on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, to, to make him think, at least, he's got the upper hand. Uh, I don't know what difference it makes, but yeah, I suppose you have a point there. He could kill us whenever he wants to. He has had many chances already. And I think that uh, he wants to continue playing with us, and uh, I suppose participating in the game a little bit won't hurt. I say, and I think, wait... It probably will. <laughs> I think we have to be good toys, you know. Play along and then uh, make uh, resistance when he doesn't expect it. That's what makes a good game, isn't it? It is indeed. Let us go back to our companions and, and tell them that we are ready to proceed. Right. And I turn towards them and I even start moving back towards them again. Van Richten looks up and nods to you both. Well... What have you decided? We will go in the carriage, and the two of us accept the invitation, play along as honoured guests. I mean, I suppose that's part of why we were drawn in to this place from the start. Hopefully, he won't expect the two of you to do whatever it is you will try to do. Do you... I have an idea what that will be, because I'm expecting you not to try and... What goes straight for his heart? Van Richten looks to Esmeralda, she frowns a little, and looks to you. First of all, you are going to need this. And he hands you a small little ring made of bronze. This is a paired ring. Esmeralda is now wearing the other. Using this ring, you will be able to know the location of the other ring, roughly at least. This will at least give you some idea of where we are. I shall give you 
an hour. Hmm. Then we shall advance on the castle and make do with the situation as it has gone, after all. We will try and be stealthy about it, but hopefully, yes, you will not be in dire peril or you will be carrying out your distraction. Remember, the important thing about this mission is that you get this item and then get out. It is not to confront him directly. We still are not as ready as we could be, especially in this scenario where he is obviously expecting us. Mm. Good. Then we are in agreement. I uh, hold up the ring and I look over at Roman. Would this help you with your distance talking skills? I um, do not need it. I think it's perhaps best that you have it. I shall uh, be able to make do with the power that Lathander grants me. And uh, I say to Van Richten, I will reach out to you, uh, or to Esmeralda, if there is need for help. Although I suspect it will be difficult to come to our aid quickly, but uh, nevertheless, uh, expect me. She nods eagerly, and finally they both wait as you begin to enter the carriage. Mm, and I uh, sit down and I thread the ring over my little finger, as the other ones are too big and coarse. And I flex it and I try to see if I feel this that he described. Already you do. It's very faint. But somehow you just know, even without looking, that Esmeralda is very, very close. It doesn't give you exact location, you feel. It's more just a feeling of vague direction, north, south, east, west, and how close they are. It's a strange feeling. It's a feeling that I've had somewhat before with people that I've cared about. Somehow you just know where someone is and that someone is safe or someone feels. It's a strange feeling to have forced upon me. It uh, sort of makes me aware of Esmeralda's presence. And it's almost as if she is invading my mind space a little bit. Although you do notice at the same time that if you actively ignore it, it goes away. It obviously is a spell that knows when you wish to use it and wish not to. Huh. And so when I notice that, I turn it off until further notice. I bring with me uh, my uh, long sword and shield and, well, what little else I could... As little as I can manage, because we'll just get in my way. Yes, and Roman, you are offered by Esmeralda a few vials of holy water that you had on her person, and perhaps a few stakes if you still didn't have any. Yes, I have the one that I made, but uh, I will gladly take uh, a spare. Although I suppose we will not be able to bring this into the wedding ceremony. It would probably be frowned upon by the guests who are undoubtedly going to be a collection of vampires. Is there anything you say finally before closing the door of the carriage? Wish us luck. And stay safe. We shall do our best. And do not worry. I am sure this is going to work. No matter what it might cost us. <laughs> I'll close the door. And as you close the door, the carriage springs to life. There is still no, you didn't see any rider suddenly appear, but the horses suddenly are aware that they need to be moving, and the carriage begins to move upon the paved road leading towards the castle. You soon lose sight of your companions as you travel. You notice now that from the inside, you can actually see through the windows just a little, well, despite them being blacked up from outside. And you ride along. It's actually quite a comfortable carriage. I feel the seats and my... 
I try to imagine the Count riding in this one, or perhaps it is just for his guests. I sprawl out on my side. It's the first time I've actually ridden in a carriage, I think, especially, and that the first one is, well, such a nice one as this, it makes me feel like it could be something I could uh, get used to, or perhaps not. Indeed, and you continue to ride for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Once again, you recall this part of the land is very hilly, very high up in altitude. Eventually, you take a turning, and you can see far the distance, although not that far now as you approach, the walls of Castle Ravenloft, a grandiose structure built upon a large precipice stone jutting a thousand feet up from the ground lower below. Completely around the structure built on this stone is void, the mountains almost having formed a natural ravine, if you will. The only way to get to this castle, as you can see, is the singular long bridge leading to its entrance, be above these, this chasm. And then the drop itself, well, you can't see from here, but you can tell it must go for at least a thousand feet down before joining the rest of the land where the little village of Barovia was. You do recall, after all, from Barovia, you could see this fortress up above. We are here. We're finally here. Yes. It's quite a sight up close. Yes. The architecture is truly spectacular. I just wish that it would be the, the dwelling of someone more benevolent. Well... Let us see what happens now. Hmm. You take a moment to look to the left, noticing some individuals. There's a young boy on a pyre, Roman. You know who the boy is. He smiles and waves at you. I I look away. Oh no, that's not real. That, that cannot. No, 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 no. He, he's just playing with you. He's just playing with you. Lathander. Clear my mind, please. Roshek, you also see this boy waving at you, tied to a pyre. You also see an orc standing close by, garbed in battle armor, wearing familiar jewelry. He frowns at you. Hmm. I uh, frown back. I cross my arms, meeting his gaze. You hear him call out to you. Disrespecting the dead, Roshek. I thought better of you. And you see him holding a necklace that looks a lot like the one you're wearing. Huh. Uh, can, I, can I open the door and shout back? You can open the door, yes. The carriage continues to move, but you will open the door. I open the door, as, even as the carriage is moving, and I shout back at him. I don't care what you think. You made your own path. I'm making mine. He merely stares at you, as these figures start to be left behind as the carriage keeps moving. Still, you take a moment to feel that necklace. Especially the front pendant. It's funny, because you remember... You scratched that front pendant. It broke in two. But this one isn't broken. I wonder why there is a mirror image that is, well, actually physical here in this place. What does that say? What does that mean? But something about it being whole again is comforting. It's almost as if the things that I've done in the past, maybe they don't matter that much in here. Perhaps, although your father's words still confuse you a little, disrespecting the dead. What have you done that is disrespecting the dead, Roshek? First, I was just thinking that he meant me having a conversation with the 
Oh, good. Okay. But that was that was not me doing something to. No. What did he mean by that? Roman, you saw all of this, by the way. As well. How? Oh, how is this possible? How? What magic is it that makes these things appear? They. They are connected to your past, yes? Because the boy... The boy... That is my son. But it cannot be my son. My son is dead. And that was my father. My father isn't dead. But he, sure as in the hells, isn't in here either. That's not him. I don't know. It's reflections of our own thoughts. Or something. I say that, but I don't sound fully convinced. He is toying with us. He wants to torture us. It is what he does after all, isn't it? And this is... I fear that this is only the beginning. We must steal ourselves. This will be a tough journey, I fear. And what did he mean by that? What did he mean, dishonoring the dead? I've done nothing of the sort. I'd look at you for answers. I... I do not know. I... I do not think that you should take the words as truth. I think... I think it says the thing that you fear most. That he's using your fears and your doubts to weaken you. It is certainly weakening me. I bang my fist against the wall. I'm a bit angry because I have always taken precaution and always honored the dead. And I say this, you know I've honored the dead. You know I I told you I buried the ogre. We all I was the only one who cared to give him a proper burial when I came back to him. I wanted to make sure that we made the grave deeper for 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 Ismac the the no the old burgomaster whatever his name was you know this Roman I will say this due to your insight Roshek has been fiddling with a necklace a lot of this conversation I don't believe you've noticed that necklace before have you you have now yes that the thing around your neck the the necklace there is it is it something that you have found here it's not something I've seen before what is it no it's it's an item of my past it's I don't know it suddenly it was in here and I wanted to I broke it once and I lost it but now I found it here and it was whole again. Are you certain that it is not something he is using to affect us? To perhaps change your view of the world? Perhaps it is a magical item of sorts. Perhaps you should be wearing it. Uh, and my fist clenches around the necklace, almost as if torn between wanting to hide it, wanting to tear it off my neck and throw it out of the carriage or just to protect it. I can't seem to make up my mind. It cannot be real. It, it cannot be real. You, it cannot be here if it is truly something from your past. It, there is no way. You said it yourself. There is no way that, that it can be here. He is powerful, but he is not that powerful. These are illusions. He is... He is using our fears against us. He is probing our minds and he's taking the things that, yes, that torture us the most. That is what he is doing. Roshek, even though you are filled now with doubt, it doesn't feel like an illusion. It feels very real. It's very comforting and you just know. You know your mother made this. That fact... You definitely know. Not quite sure how, but you do know that. She made it and I finished the carving. I, uh... I loosened my grip of it a little bit. 
and uh, I shake my head and I say, and I say, no, no, I do not believe that it's him. I, I, I won't believe it. This is something else. It's something precious. I, I've had dreams. And like the dreams, I think this has been sent to me. Well, let us pray that that is, that that is the way things are then. Let us pray that we can get to this wedding now without any further mm, unpleasant visions. The carriage begins to draw closer to the great drawbridge that leads over the chasm. You pass by briefly twin turrets of stone, broken from years of exposure. Beyond these guard towers is the precipice of a 50-foot wide fog-filled chasm that now you can see down to it seems to disappear into unknown depths. A lowered drawbridge of old, shored up wooden beams stretch across the chasm between you and the archway to a courtyard, which you are now travelling towards. The chains of the drawbridge creak in the wind, their rust-eaten iron straining under the weight. From atop the high walls that surround the castle, as you recall from the maps and diagrams that you can now see, stone gargoyles stare at you, their hollow eye sockets grinning hideously. A rotting wooden portcullis, green with growth, hangs above the entry tunnel, and beyond this location, finally, you see the castle itself, inside these walls. You notice its grand main doors are open, and a rich warm light spills from within, flooding a courtyard outside. Torches flutter sadly in scones on both sides of these open doors. The carriage jerks a little and stops, the door swinging open then to let you out, and you find yourself standing between these grand entrance doors for the castle, the castle of Ravenloft. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign Curse of Strahd for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Curse of Strahd was designed by Christopher Perkins and based on the adventure Ravenloft, written by Tracy and Laura Hickman in 1983. Dungeons & Dragons is published by Wizards of the Coast. The music is created by Metatron Omega, Flowers for Body Snatchers, and Word Clock, and is used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more tasty dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us feedback, comments, and input there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a huge thank you to our growing base of supporters. You are truly amazing and inspire us so much to keep going with the show. If you haven't yet found us on Patreon, please have a look at the links in the description and see if you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work with the show there. While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters have access to extra material such as our bonus Q&A podcast, Ask for the Moon, where we discuss all topics and questions our Patreons have for us. You can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.